Okay, we're at Protest Central. This is City Hall in Philadelphia at the DNC. We got some bike cops, huh? Look at that. Jill Stein is speaking right now. Let's go listen to what Jill Stein has to say. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Because the lesser evil does not work. Just look at the results of the last 15, 16 years. We were told we had to use the politics of fear and vote against your fears rather than for what you believe in. And what did we get? All those reasons we were told to vote for the lesser evil because you didn't want the expanding wars, because you didn't want the meltdown of the climate, because you didn't want the massive Wall Street bailouts, or the expanding security state, or the massive prison industrial complex, or the attack on immigrants, or on our civil liberties, and the right of the free press. That's exactly what we got by allowing ourselves to be silenced. evil thing, we create a moral vacuum. If our voices aren't there as the public interest, it's the corporate predator politicians who are there. They fill this moral vacuum and it's all downward from there. And furthermore, people stop coming out to vote for lesser evil politicians that are throwing them under the bus. So it's a losing proposition. The lesser evil merely paves the way to the greater evil. And that's exactly what we have seen happen. After the election of a lesser evil president, we saw first one house of Congress flip from blue to red, and then another house of Congress, not because it was a victory, it was not a victory for Republicans, it was a loss for Democrats because the base just couldn't bring themselves to come out and vote. Jill, Labor Jill, stayed Jill, home, Jill, women Jill, stayed Jill, home, Jill, immigrants Jill, and Jill. Latinos stayed home, and youth stayed home. The answer here, the answer at the end of the day is very simple. Forget the lesser evil, fight for the greater good like our lives depend on it.
from a crisis for people, planet, and peace to a new day for all of us on a small planet in which we are all going to sail together or we are all going to sink together. The words of Martin Luther King have come home with incredible power. The threat to justice anywhere, injustice anywhere, is a threat to justice everywhere. We need, we need an America and a world that works for all of us. The power to create that world is not just in our hopes, it's not just in our dreams. Right here and now, it's in our hands. Yeah. Together, we are unstoppable. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jill, 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 I thought that was a great speech. Oh, thank you so much. Now, it, now I, I keep you saying that you shouldn't vote for the lesser of two evils. Which one is it? Right, yeah. <laughs> and so, it, it, now are you saying we, we have to stop voting for the lesser of two evils, why? Uh, because this politics of fear that has told us to vote against our fears rather than for our beliefs, it has a track record. We've been doing this for a while. This politics of fear delivered everything we were afraid of. All the reasons you're told to vote for the lesser evil, because you don't want the expanding wars. You didn't want anyway. the meltdown. Yes, exactly. We get it anyway, because it's not a solution. The lesser evil paves the way to the greater evil, because people stop voting for politicians and their parties that are throwing them under the bus. So electing a lesser evil president basically caused Congress to flip, first in one midterm and then the other, from blue to red, because people were so disappointed in what they thought was going to be, you know, a progressive president turned out to be a lesser evil. People won't support it. So you wind up getting the greater evil anyhow. The other reason not to vote for the lesser evil is because we actually have the power of the numbers right now. We actually have 42 million people who will vote to cancel their debt if they're given an opportunity to do so. It's all about getting the word out. The corporate media is working overtime to blanket our campaign in a wall of darkness so that people don't know. Why are they doing that? You know, we're at 6 and 7% in the polls. Republicans who were barely 2 and 3%, like Jeb Bush, for example, you know, in their primary, they were getting loads of coverage. We're getting none. As we've seen by that, uh, by the revelations in the emails, this doesn't happen by accident. There's a strategy going on here between the DNC and the big corporate media. I would love to see the other emails that, uh, that have been flying back and forth what because we are a very inconvenient truth for Hillary Clinton. There actually is a place to vote as a feminist or as a proponent of peace or as a progressive. Hillary Clinton is not that, and if you had any doubts about it, her choice of a vice president with Tim Kaine is, you know, is the is the nail in the coffin there on the future of the progressive movement inside the Democratic Party. Do you have a message for Bernie San Sanders? Well, because uh, everybody heard him and tell his followers to uh, or his supporters to vote for her again this morning, which was not m received well. And do you have a message for him? Um, I have a message for the Bernie movement, which is that it's a movement. It's not a man, as Bernie said many times his campaign uh, is you know it's like it's like his child in a way that it's come of age it's grown up he can't tell it what to do you know this is what democracy looks like this is what empowerment looks like this is what justice looks like and he may not see his way forward but there's a younger generation that is looking at the future not looking behind at the past and they know there is no future in a counter-revolutionary democratic party and this movement is going forward to the promise of democracy and the future that we deserve there's no stopping us okay, and and what do you uh, what would you aren't you surprised to see hillary not trying to get some of your six percent voters like don't you think because it's such a tight race wouldn't it make political sense for her to come and try to get some of your voters to vote for her? And why do you think she isn't? I don't think Hillary is strategic. You know, we've seen that over and over again in her foreign policy as in her campaign strategy. Um, 
you know, she does not have a very good track record for making good decisions or having good political judgment. Yeah, I mean, I think she's kind of blowing every opportunity here. Having not appointed Bernie for her vice presidential candidate, you know, it was an incredible slap in the face to this movement. And then she just doubled down and did it again many times over, not only by appointing Tim Kaine as her VP, but also by um, consigning Bernie to this little footnote in the, in the proceedings. How could she more convince the progressive movement that it has no future inside of the Democratic Party than every step that she has taken? So well, People have said about you, more what they've said about Bernie, but in spades, that y'all, you're not, you can't win, you're not, nobody's gonna be attracted. I just saw you give a speech that was a barn burner that really got people stirred up, it got me stirred up, and I was really enjoying it. So uh, what, what do you say to those people who say that you're a spoiler, you don't have a chance, I saw something different just now. Well, did you know that the parties of, of the abolition movement, when the abolition movement first got political, because first it was a social movement, then it got political and, and um, developed political parties, the Free Soil, the Liberty, and then the Republican, which actually became a major party at this time of great social upheaval. We are in a time of great social upheaval right now. It's time to really uh, blow open this the stranglehold of this corporate political system that is throwing us and our future under the bus. I think the American people are not going to be fooled here. Those who are urging, um, you know, to uh, to forget this spoiler, who are they? You know, these are the political pundits. These are the party operatives who don't want, uh, you know, they don't want it rained on their parade. They don't want their good little niche in the scheme of things spoiled. Why in the world would they be telling the American public who's demanding other choices, why would they be telling them to basically shove it right now? I mean, that's an, that's an offense to our democracy. We could actually change our voting system right now in the stroke of a pen. We have model legislation that would enable any state legislature to change the way they count the presidential vote uh, to a ranked choice voting system, which means Voters get to come and rank their choices. It gets rid of this whole politics of fear thing. It totally enables people to stand up and vote number one for what you want, and number two is your safety, and it ensures if your number one loses, your vote is reassigned to your second choice. This is like the obvious solution. We proposed this, we filed this bill. What is that bill called? Uh, ranked choice voting, and it's being promoted actually by Fair Vote, which is a nonprofit organization that uh, does this. We'll have it up on our website soon. How come, so, even I haven't really heard about this push to do this. This seems like the thing that would take away such, the... It's such a no-brainer. Why don't we do this? Our campaign filed this bill the first time I ran for office in 2002 against Mitt Romney in a Democratic state where everybody was all, you know, up in arms. Oh, you're going to split the vote. We said, well, here's the bill to prevent any splitting of the vote. And what do you think they did? They buried that bill in a Democratic legislature that could have passed it with the blink of an eye. They choose not to pay. And 16 years later, it still hasn't gotten out of committee. Why is that? It's because they rely on fear. They have to be able to scare you into voting for them. The fact that they rely on fear tells you something very important. They are not your friend. That alone should lose your vote on their behalf. Forget it. They are not your friend now. They are not your friend in the future. It's time for us to stand up and build our power. Jill. Love you. Jill, Love you. Jill thanks for talking with us. We're the ones we've been waiting for. Thank you. Fantastic.